Good morning. We can do better than that. Good morning. That's better. God's been good to us. He's allowed us to rise from a restful night's sleep, hopefully a restful night's sleep, to come to this place and to serve him corporately in spirit and in truth. We never need to get too complacent or, or think of a country club attitude when it comes to our worship because God has blessed you this morning and he didn't have to. There, there are many people that laid down last night that were not touched with God's finger of love to get up this morning. So we ought to be thankful to come here and to serve him in spirit and in truth. Trent, I'm glad to see you. Welcome to those who are visiting uh, with us, the regular, faithful, dedicated members of the congregation here in Trent, as well as those who took the short drive from wherever you came from to, to, to be with us. We are so, so thankful that you have come with us. First time visitors, um, we have a gift for you. If this is your first time, please raise your hand. And uh, we have a, a small gift, a small to Steve, really? Seriously? <laughs> Steve is collecting those goodie bags. I'm convinced of it. He's collecting those. No, we, we, just, we just want you to know we are so thankful that you visited with us. It's rude to overlook somebody who comes to your house. You at least need to acknowledge them and make them feel welcome so that they'll think about coming back again. Those who are visiting, we are delighted that you are with us. We offer uh, our services to you. If there's anything that we can do to further your walk with God. Maybe maybe you have a couple of Bible questions that you want answered. I, I avail. We avail ourselves for that. Maybe, maybe you're looking for a place to work and a place to fellowship. We invite you to come and, and to be with us on a regular, regular basis. Trent, uh, God is doing some tremendous things through our congregation. We don't need to be hearty or heady. We just need to be humble and continue to serve him in spirit and in truth. And I'm glad, uh, my wife and I say this all the time, we're so glad and so humbled to be here in Trent with you, serving in spirit and in truth. I want to um, encourage us to keep a family in your prayers. All of us may not know um, Bill Basket's family, but Bill Basket, a member of the uh, church in uh, Abilene at Baker Heights, Bill passed away a few days ago, and uh, Bill, Bill was an exceptional man. When my wife and I first got to Baker Heights, Bill and his family were the first to reach out to us, take us to dinner. Bill used to like to eat at Cotton Patch, and uh, just Bill was an outstanding personal worker. Soul working was, personal work was in his DNA, and so you can imagine um, how I felt when I found out that uh, Bill passed. There is no doubt in my mind that Bill has gone on to be with our Lord. Pray for his wife, Pauline, and for their, their two children. Um, the services will be, the visitation will be on February the 4th from 12 noon until 2 p.m. And then immediately following um, that at 2 p.m. will be his homegoing service at the Baker Heights congregation, encouraging as many people as can to attend and just to show their support, show their support for the family. Um, today at five o'clock, we will uh, we'll be, we won't have our evening service online. We'll be in Tuscola with the uh, Jim Ned Valley Church. This is Fifth Sunday singing. And so I'm encouraging as many people as possible. Let's make the trek from Trent to Tuscola to participate with them in their fifth Sunday singing. Again, I've told you um, this before, we want you to, to be as open and hospitable as you can because the next rotation, I'm gonna hopefully get us to host that and we're gonna be asking them to come here. And so we can't in good conscience ask them to come here without us going there and showing support. So five o'clock, this afternoon, we'll be in Tuscola at the Jim Ned Valley Church. Song leaders, I'm almost sure uh, that they're going to call on you. So 
bring your songs and let's encourage those brothers and sisters as as they will mutually encourage us it's go time that's been the theme uh, of our lessons all this month you remember that we started off and we talked about God being an action God God is a God of action and I, I make no secrets about it my my aim in every lesson especially this month is to get us out of the mode of perhaps thinking about God just on Sundays and Wednesdays and putting God in our practice in our life every single day because I'm convinced some of us have what I call a country club attitude when it comes to our relationship with God. We do what we want to do, and we only think about God on the way to church on Sunday, and then if we might go on Wednesday night. And so starting this, this, this month off, I'm saying as we finish it today, uh, it's go time. Trent, God is doing some tremendous things through our congregation as we re-engage uh, with the brotherhood and the congregations around here. There's some great things that God is causing us to take action as we've partnered with the school. This is go time. And everything that we can do in our life is yet lacking in comparison to God's grace, God's mercy, and his goodness. Three, three results I've tried to get you to see all this month of realizing that God uh, is a go God and God is a God of action. Number one, this month, hopefully you've learned something that you've gotten to know him better. Number two, hopefully these lessons have helped you to develop a deeper faith. How do you know if you're if you're you're developing a deeper faith and having conversations with, with people this month I've heard some good pleasing comments but example you know I I hadn't thought about that scripture like that and when I was at work this happened and I thought about this or when I was doing this this happened see that tells me that we are incorporating the word into our lives on a daily basis and we're thinking about our relationship with God and not just living the way we want to live but we're serving we're serving him. So this month, hopefully you've gotten to know him better. Hopefully you've developed a deeper faith. And then my intent this month has been that we need to make God our go-to for everything in our life. Not the, not the person, not the sister or the brother that you call, girl, let me just tell you what happened to me. You ain't going to believe. No, that's your go-to person. God needs to be our go-to in our lives. And if Christ is not the go-to person in your life, let me just tell you, you're going to head to the wrong places for finding peace, for finding comfort, and perhaps even finding salvation. Let's finish this month up. Last Sunday of the month, let's talk about go grow up. Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. There was a, a comedian years ago. Y'all remember Joan Rivers? Joan Rivers used to have an expression all the time. She'd, she'd get this in every chance she could, I'll grow up. You know, and I heard that, and I got to hearing that, and I was preparing for this last month. I thought, you know, that expression is not too far off. <laughs> that, that's not too far off, because if we don't have a deliberate and an intentional mindset to grow in Christ, then why are we coming to church? I'm sorry, huh? <laughs> why, why, why are we doing all this? Oh, I get it. Just to check a box and say we went to church. Eh, not good enough. Our relationship with God needs to be from one level, through his word, and through prayer, he takes us to another level. So let's finish a month out, and let's talk about go, grow up. Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11 the Bible reads like this. Paul says, and this is my prayer, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight so that you may be able to discern, circle that word in your mind, I'll be back to it. You may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. 
filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word and for the power that it has. Thank you, Lord, for sending Christ to die on the cross to take our place. Thank you for the relationship that his death made possible, our connection or reconnection with you. Now, Lord, as we, as we open your word and as we study and as we meditate and think about it, Lord, I ask that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing and acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Help us to, help us to grab this word and to, to put it into practice to make us better people, better sons, better daughters for you, so that the world may see Christ and him glorified and magnified in our lives. Help us to grow in every way and abound in all things so that we can have Christ formed in us and we learn you better and we live better one with another. Forgive us of our sins and our shortcomings. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Look at verse 9. The key there for growing, again, I told you, Joan Rivers wasn't, wasn't too far off. As Christians, we ought to grow up. As Christians, we shouldn't be the same level that we are this year, this time next year. There ought to be a difference. And Paul is saying in verse 9 that this knowledge, this understanding ought to abound more and more. And if that's not the definition of growth, then I don't know what is. Growing up, as I was the only boy, and I had two sisters, you know, it, it almost seemed like uh, if you were around me a, a lot, and I'm not an exceptionally tall man, but, but growing up, I did grow faster uh, than, my, than my sisters. And my cousins would come around, and other people would come around, and they'd say, hey, man, Junior, you, you sure are getting tall. Boy, you getting big. I'm like, I look in the mirror, I don't see a difference. Uh, there's, there's, nothing, there's nothing growing about me. That's because those who didn't see me as often could tell growth where those who were around me a lot, it almost happened before their very eyes. Isn't that the way Christianity is to some of us? Some of us, we don't think about God, and, and so we don't grow, or we take this growth for granted. But, but Paul is saying in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 9, if we're really going to grow, then here's the key. And verse 10 and verse 11 is going to be some secrets to point back to verse 9. If we're going to grow, evidence of that growth is it's going to have to abound more and more. Look closer. Verse 10 and verse 11 is a shout out. It's a callback to verse number 9. It's a direct result of verse number 9 so that you may be able to discern. Discerning is a direct result of growth and being abounded more and more. And the only way you can be filled is to abound more and more. What am I getting at? Don't take for granted spiritual growth. And we need to be more deliberate and more intentional about spiritual growth. And, and, and Trent, I'm going to tell you, your, your preacher is serious. Your preacher is serious about this. Gone are the days to where we just get comfortable. Well, we went to worship, and that's all we do. Now we do our own thing. Those days gone. Those days are gone. Because our relationship with God, and our mutual building up of each other happens more than just our spiritual check-in when we come to this building. And that's been the problem. Not just maybe with Trent. I'm talking about the church worldwide. We're getting too complacent and too perhaps apathetic. We're not even growing the way we should. Look at it like this. The mission of the church is three things. You got to know you got to grow, and you got to go. See, if we get to the point to where our biblical knowledge just stays in this building, it doesn't do the kingdom of God any good. 
We have got to study to know the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, you know what the Bible says. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. But guess what? Hold on to something. As my daughter used to say, grab on to something. Hold, hold, brace yourself. If there's a way to rightly divide something, there's a way to wrongly divide it. And the only way you're going to know the difference is guess what? You got to study. So you got to know. Then, evidence of that knowledge is in growth. But instead, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, we ought to speak the truth in love, should grow to become every, in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. We must grow. And then after that, you know the Bible, we've got to go. There must be opportunities for us to reach out and to teach. And Trent, that's what I've been trying to do. We, we need to get church to leave the building. And we need to reach out and serve our community. Matthew 28, you know the text. 18 through 20. Go ye into all the world and teach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be, die, shall be damned. We need to be able to reach out and to go. And again, Joan Rivers wasn't too wrong when she said we need to grow up. But Trent, I'm going to get back to the text in just a second. And since we won't, ha we won't have an evening service, I got to do all this in one, in one shot. In the church today, I'm, I'm concerned about some things. We are standing between two extremes when it comes to Christianity, the Bible, and how people perceive uh, what religion is. On one hand, we are uh, living amongst people who, who just live and they're subject to their feelings. They're, they're devoid of doctrine. In fact, there are some people who you hear the word doctrine and they run away from it. All, all, they say all we need to do is just be bathed in love and we just need to show love. That's only half. That's only half of the story. Then we've got others who don't really care about love. But what they really care about is they emphasize knowledge and correct doctrine, but in practice, they deny biblical love. They're all head, but they don't have any heart. And that's been a problem as well. Do you see the two extremes? On one extreme, we got brothers and sisters who don't want to hear doctrine. They don't want to hear teaching. They don't want to learn the Bible. They just want to be embraced in love. That's only half of it. You got others who lean towards biblical doctrine, biblical teaching. The Bible is this, and we don't love you. We don't do anything for you. I'm saying both of them are wrong. I'm saying both of them are wrong. We've got to maintain biblically a healthy balance and if we're going to grow up then we're going to have to grow up not spiritually malnourished we're going to have to grow in a way that is healthy and wholesome when it comes to the body of christ and trent i'm serious about that here serving the best that i can i want all of us to grow up with a happy healthy wholesome spiritual diet. So how do you get that? How do we get there? Brother Faber, how Philippians chapter 1 tells us how to do it. And I'm going to hit this and then I'll have to clean it up if I leave anything off on, uh, on Wednesday night. But I'm saying that we need to grow in order to go. Remember verse 10, that you'll be able to discern what's best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Listen, the more you learn, the better you should be able to discern. It's not good enough just to learn just for the sake of knowledge. You ever, in school, there were some people who, who could quote the, the information, who had a head knowledge of it, but in practice, they didn't put that into practice at all. I'm saying biblically, we need to, the more we learn, the more we can, we can quote the Bible is one thing, but we need to be able to live the Bible another way. To discern means that we need to come to know or we need to recognize. If you're able to discern something, you ought to be able to look at it and tell that it's right or wrong. And biblically, if we look at doctrine, if we look at teaching, if we look at things, we should be able to discern with the word of God whether something is biblical or whether something is not. 
Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. You remember your Bible? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your what? To your own understanding. See, your own understanding is the problem. Because if your own understanding, you haven't been taught properly, you can only understand as well as you're taught. That's why we need to come together and look at the Bible and accept what the Bible says. And we need to make the changes, not make the Bible change for us. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he will make straight your path. Reminds me of the young intern who got his first job out of uh, college at the Department of the Treasury. And this, this young intern really wanted to get in a, a department where, you know, they actually print the money. But the opening that he, only opening he could get was in the Department of Counterfeit Recognition. So he came to work, and the first day, they dumped a whole sack of money on his desk. Nice office, he went to work. And, and he, they said, the instructions they had that day was, okay, we want you to separate this money into two piles. Put the real bills on this side, put the counterfeit bills on this side. We'll come back and check on you after lunch. Okay, cool. So he gets there and he starts sorting through it. And guess what? Every bill in that bag was the real thing and nothing in the counterfeit pile. So they came back and checked on him and, and he turned in the work that he did. That's oh, okay, good, thank you. Okay, well, you've been working hard today, go home. The next day he came back to work, well, maybe that'd give me something better to do today. Guess what they did? They dumped another bag of money on the desk. Do the same thing. Third day, same thing. Come Friday, he's hot. You mean to tell me this is my job, all I gotta do is this, and I already can tell you what these real bills are, and I want something else to do. Old man sitting in the cubicle behind him said, son, come here. Uh, I knew you want to do something different, and this is the department of, uh, of counterfeit. Let me give you a secret. If you learn to recognize the real thing, you'll spot a counterfeit when you see it. Oh, y'all didn't get, you'll get that at lunch. You, you get that at lunch. See, y'all didn't get that. See, if we study our Bibles and if we stay with the word, that's why you don't see me going out and beating up other churches. I, I don't believe. Let's stay with the word. If we know what the church should look like in the Bible, we're going to spot a counterfeit whenever we see it. Part of growing up is recognizing we got to know and be able to discern the real from the counterfeit. Verse 11 in that same text, he says that you be filled with the, with the, the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and the praise of God. Godly living. See, that's again, you, you've heard me say that before. Godly living involves bearing fruit through Jesus Christ. See, it's not good enough to say, oh yeah, I've been to church. Or, oh yeah, I go to church. Not good enough. Our personality, our godly living, our life should draw people to be like Christ because they see him glorified and magnified in our lives. The word fruit here implies that this is a process. Okay, this is a pro this doesn't happen all the time. Uh, this is a process. You don't just put a seed in the ground, come back the next day and harvest it. It doesn't work that way. It's a process. It's not something that's instantaneous. This implication is that the life of Christ is working in and through us, and that is what produces the fruit. Look at John 15. Jesus talked about this process. He says, I am the vine, and my father is the gardener. Or King James there says the vine dresser. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch does, that does bear fruit, he prunes it, he cultivates it, he, he dresses it in such a way so that they can produce more, so that they can grow more fruit. And he says in verse 3, you are already clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. So you look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11, and you ask yourself, okay, I understand that we should grow. 
I understand that, that we ought to be mature in Christ. And, and you've heard me say this before, Trent, this is my so what. You know, there are some things that we teach that we ought to make more practical. We ought to, we ought to, we ought to break it down the brass tacks. So what? Here's the so what about spiritual growth. Biblical Christianity means loving God and loving other people fervently from the heart. But it also requires that such love is in line with God's truth as it is revealed in his word. Love for God and love for others that is not based on truth is just deluded emotionalism. And I'm concerned about some of our churches now because that's where we've gone. We've gone to just deluded emotionalism. Well, what did y'all learn in church today? I don't know, but we sure had church. Really? For real? <laughs> I'm concerned about some of our, we, we're just getting to the point to where it's diluted emotionalism. But let, me, let me end with this. But truth devoid of love leads to arrogance. We need to be balanced in our spiritual teaching and we need to be balanced when it comes to our spiritual growth. We've got to have the scales even handed when it comes to biblical teaching and showing of love. To tip the scales one way or the other represents an imbalance that you do not find in God's word. So what does that mean? What does that mean for us? Every time I come to this building, every time I, I get in, in, in the presence of God and with his people, I need to be asking one question. Lord, what is it that you want me to do to serve you better and to magnify you in and through my life better? Everyone that has come to God, has done it the same way. They, they weren't forced, they weren't pushed, they weren't coerced. Everybody that comes to God has come based on hearing his word, believing it, repenting of their sins, confessing Christ, and being willing to be baptized in water for the remission of their sins. Biblical doctrine teaching all have done it the same way to rise up from the watery grave of baptism to walk, as Colossians and Romans says, to walk in a newness of life. This is a time in just a moment where we have an opportunity to, to get a closer connection with God. If there's something in your life that you've been struggling with and you've been trying to handle, let me save you some sweat. You're not going to be able to handle that thing by yourself. That's why you're struggling. If in fact you have a prayer request that you need to ask the church to pray for, listen, we do not need all the sort of details. We just need to know what the prayer need is so that we can pray for you. Why? Because James says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Or maybe you've heard something today that sparked your, 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 your curiosity. Maybe there's, an, there's a question in there that you don't want to come forward in a public way. Then get with me privately and let's sit and talk. Let's open the word and see exactly what God has planned for you. Why? Because you may have been trying to do it on your own and it's not working out. I, I could have saved you some struggle and tell you it's not going to work out. Whatever your need is, we invite you to give your life to God. Maybe you want to ask for prayer. Maybe, may, maybe there's a Bible question, or maybe you want to obey the gospel, or maybe you want to be taught more about how God would use you in his kingdom. Whatever your need, we invite you. In just a moment, we invite you to come. Next month is showtime. All the lessons will involve around us being an example when it comes to our relationship with God. See, it does no good to go without growing to show. It does no good. So next month, we're going to talk about what an example I should be. And all those lessons are going to come from the book of Colossians chapter 3. And that, that, that sermon series is going to be living life as someone who has been made in the image of Christ. What should that, what should that look like. But if you have a need this morning, 
we invite you to come and let us know that need as we stand and as we sing the song of invitation. <laughs>